I want to welcome you to week eight of a study in 1 Corinthians. And I want to take this time to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us further the kingdom of God by sowing his word all over this planet through this podcast, through me going out and and preaching and teaching and, and encouraging people in what God has written down for them to live in, to live by, and that is his word. His word is the most important thing that a Christian will ever put into their hearts and into their lives and live in. Because those truths, God's truths that he has written down for us, strengthens us, helps us to realize and know and understand that that God is for us. And partners, you got a part in doing that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into God's kingdom. People don't realize how important it is, and that is to make sure that God's people, God's people know what they're doing, and that is know what they're doing when they give God's word away, sowing it, sowing it into this world, sowing it into other people. They are strengthening them. We're seeing lives changed through this podcast, through my ministry, and, and I thank God for that because he's the one that's given the increase, not me. He's the one that's growing this ministry, not me. But I thank God that he has put people in, in, in lockstep with me to, to walk with me and to, to help me be strong in God's word and to give it away all over this planet. We're giving God's word away to everyone that'll listen. And I thank God for that today. I want you to understand how important God's word is to the world that we live in. There's not a doubt in my mind, if it wasn't for God and what he has written down for me and you to live in and to live by, I'd have never made it as as far as I have. I'm 53 years old at the time of this recording, and I thank God every day that it it is his word that has brought me through, that has strengthened me and helped me to know and realize and understand that he has been for me my entire existence on this earth. I, and that is my determined desire to make sure that the world that we live in comes to that same conclusion, that God is for them. And he has written down everything that they will ever need to live in those truths, to live strong in him and what he has given us to believe. So thank you. Thank you, partners, for all that you do. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Don't forget, don't forget, download this phone app and make sure that you get what God has written down for you on a regular basis put straight to your phone so that you can live strong in him, in God's truth today. My prayers for the world that we live in goes out Monday through Friday on this podcast. But I want you to understand and know something. I pray for this world every day of my life because I want the world to know and understand the love and the grace and the mercy that God has for them. Is what his word will teach them and strengthen them to understand. Ephesians 1.15, Paul said, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler, or authority, or power, or leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ, 
and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes more and more every day of my life to to that love that we've been talking about, that mercy, that grace, and that goodness. And I pray today that he opens yours. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I want to start out today by just just giving God all the glory for what is going on in this podcast, what the people's lives are being changed, and, and how things are just working out to, to further His kingdom. Uh, through this podcast, through our ministry, what what goes on, what we're what we're doing out here in the world, you know, I'm leaving next week, or uh, let me let me know the week after, and going back and and teaching, and at a ministry my my son is serving in, and I hold it, I hold a great honor. That's a great honor to be asked to come and teach, and I thank God for that, teaching people who they are in Him. Now this week we're going we're going to be in in the uh, third chapter of First Corinthians, and we're going to start out today in in uh, chapter ten or uh, verse ten rather. But I want to read the first two. I'm going to read New Living and Amplified Classic first this week. The New Living Translation of First Corinthians three and ten says, "Because of God's grace to me." I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whosoever, whoever is building on, on this foundation must be careful. Now let me, let me uh, read what the Amplified Classic says. It says, it says, according to the grace, the special endowment for, this, for my task of God, Bestowed on me like a skillful architect and a master builder, I laid the foundation and another man is building upon, but let each man be careful how he builds upon it. The the King James Version of 1 Corinthians 3 and 10 says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he build us, builds upon. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. A foundation laid on God's grace. You know, Paul laid the foundation for the church. And he, he laid it out for us all to, to build upon it. See, he said another man's going to build on this, on this uh, foundation. He's talking about Jesus Christ and what he done to, to sacrifice himself, to put us in the position that we're in to build upon him, to, to spread the good news of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. See, when I come to know Jesus as my Lord in my early 20s, I had no idea. I had no idea what that entailed. 
I, I had no idea of the promises that, that was made to mankind to me through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. And, and it took me decades to figure that out. But I look back at, back at it now and I think, you know, I'm glad that it's took me this long to, to figure out what I need to be a, to, to have done because, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have been la- building on that foundation the way I was living and, and believing back then. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the, the word says something, but yet there's a lot of people in this world that, that has no idea what it says. And, they just guess at it. And if it sounds good, you know, some of that stuff takes root and and people spread it. I, I know for a fact I have believed things in my life over the years that had no biblical foundation at all. And, and not only no biblical foundation, but it was designed to tear what what had been built down religion has d- just i'm talking about wreaked havoc in the church because the majority of the people that that you see in the church are so wound up in what man has said in their lives and what they have heard in their lives that they come to a place that you know they're just they're just a loss for words they don't know which way to turn i've got a good friend I'm going to tell you this, and the other day, he lost his wife, and I love him dearly. He's been a a friend over the years. I hadn't seen him in a long time, but he's been a family friend. We've known known this family family for, for 35 years, as long as we've been married, literally, I'm a, almost as long as we've been married, and uh, he lost his wife, and it was such a such a sad thing because she was really young. She was 68. I mean, that's not old. I mean, really, think about it. And uh, But he, was, he, he told me, he said, you know, the Lord took her. And I told him, I said, no. I said, no, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, you know, you're right, ain't you? I said, yeah. I said, I said, Satan's the one that's wreaking havoc in this world. And I told him that, and that's all I said to him. It, it, was, just, it was just something I want him to understand, that, that God didn't take his wife, that, that, that Satan, that through that sickness, killed his wife. And, but what, I, what I'm talking about today, the foundation of Jesus Christ, people have trying to build some stuff on that that foundation that don't need to be there. That don't need to be uh, even thought about. My son, he's in for a couple of weeks from from uh, where he's he's working now. And uh, he come in and took uh, took some time off and come in and, and spent some time with us. And he was he was watching a, a very popular family teach the Bible. And they got a podcast, and and you know they're really funny people, and I'm, I'm not throwing off on them at all. But but uh, they they're they're business people. They're not uh, they're not ministry people, and I don't know how to put it other than just say it. You know they had an advertisement on on their podcast, and it was talking about a, an organization that they're affiliated with that that are therapists, and 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 wanted to was advertising for this therapy company. And and I'm like, I told Taylor, I said, well, he's kind of kind of grinning and he's shaking his head like, you know, that I, what are they talking about? I said, the the best therapist in the world resides in God's people and that's the Holy Spirit. And I said that therapy comes straight out of that that book that he's got folded uh, unfolded right there in front of him of him on that table. Yet yet he's advertising for a therapist, it just it's contradictory uh, terms when we come to this, and that's pro- what Paul was was talking about in the tenth verse. He said, "Let every man be careful what he builds upon this foundation, 
because he said, look, I, I built this. And 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 let's, let me go back and read the, the 10th verse of um, on the King James Version. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build upon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. There's been a lot of craziness built on Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made. And I can't say it any better. We need to understand and to know that if if there's not any biblical soundness to those teachings, they need to be tore down. They need to be torn down and thrown away. I heard a minister talking about it years ago. He said, I went went back and started thinking about what I believed, and I come to the conclusion that if I couldn't find Bible on it, I was going to cast it out of my life. And that is the truth for every person that walks face of this planet. If what you believe does not line up with what thus saith the word of God, throw it away. Throw it away and don't let it hinder you ever again. He, that man, that uh, his wife died, he said, you know, she's worried. He said she worries. She worried about everything, everything, and and that is that that's just typical of someone that that just really don't know what God wants to do in their life, what He wants to do for them. Because He, you know, the Bible says, "Cast all cast all your cares upon Him." Don't 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 be worried about anything, but cast all your cares upon Him. And God bless her. She's I'm talking about one of the best women that you'll ever come across. Loving, cares about people, but really did not know what God wanted to do in her life. And that's sad. That's so sad to live that way. That the foundation was set. There's not a doubt in my mind that she would that she was born again. I know she was born again. She was a, a I mean a good woman, and and the fruits of that salvation showed through but the fact of the matter is the the word had never taken root and grown in her because she you know she she was just inundated with fear her husband her husband said it and that's sad because we can have freedom from that fear we can have freedom from that fear so whatever you're building on the on the foundation that is laid on God's grace, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Whatever you're building upon it, make sure that it's being built according to thus saith the word of God and what it says. Let that let that be built upon the salvation that you have acquired through the salvation, through the sacrifice that Jesus made. And be careful with it. Pay attention. Like I say, if there's something in your in your life that you do not know is is directly linked to the to the scriptures, throw it out. Throw it out. I promise you, God will lead you. He'll guide you and he'll direct you. And he'll always do it through his spirit and point you directly at God's word. Now, today I want to ask you a question. I do this every time I do a podcast. Are you born again? Do you, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you allowed Jesus to come into your heart and into your life and save you? Have you invited him in? Romans 10, 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He will. I promise you he will. And then get in his word. Get in what God is saying to you, for you, about you in his word and walk strong in that. Be strong in it today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Now, hey, if you're uh, listening to this podcast, go to our website, download this phone app. Download this phone app, 
and and go back to June the 21st of 2021 and start this in him scripture study with us and then come on through and 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 let's study the the epistles of Paul and find out how Paul was instructing and teaching the church to live strong in who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. If you if you got a prayer request, I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God's got an answer for your prayers. And the answer for those prayers will come directly out of his word. Oh, I thank God for that today. Go to our website. It's the dash prodigal son.com. And once again, thank you partners for all that you do. So in this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. And that is to give his word away free of charge all over this planet, all over this planet. So others can grow strong in who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and savior. I pray Mark 10, 29 and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.